Shalom, I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, and double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS that taught us his word. Uh, I just came across this article from uh, spacenews.com, and you know, uh, what came to mind was, uh, you know, that war in heaven, of Second Ezra 13, basically it's about, you know, space core that they're trying to, uh, to create, you know, a military branch uh, that's specializing in, in space, you know, We're trying to move forward with that uh, that Star Wars program that you know the Reagan administration was talking about back in the 80s. But really, it's they know these these prophecies, and they know the scriptures, and the prophecy of you know Yahweh Shai returning in those chariots, and they're coming up with ways to try to you know, the fight of the Lord, which is, you know, the scriptures. Um, so, yeah, just reading from this article is entitled, House Panel Takes First Step Towards Military Space Corps, uh, from spacenews.com. It's dated June 20th, 2017. Uh, lawmakers on Tuesday took the first step towards establishing a space corps within the Air Force, similar to the way the Marine Corps functions in the Navy by drafting legislation that would require a new organization to be set up by January 1st, 2019. As the House Armed Services Committee prepares to vote on the National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, this is to Strategic, strategic Forces Subcommittee, which oversees military space matters, released its proposed additions to the bill. The subcommittee has scheduled a, a formal legislative markup session for its portions of the bill on Thursday. The subcommittee's top Republican, Representative Mike Rogers of Alabama, and top Democrat, Representative Jim Cooper of Tennessee, so the subcommittee's mark would require the Air Force to establish a Space Corps to serve as a separate military service within the Department of the Air Force and under the civilian leadership of the Secretary of Armed Force of the Air Force. Uh, there is bipartisan acknowledgement that the strategic advantages we derive from our national security space systems are eroding. Uh, Rogers and Cooper said in a prepared statement, we are convinced that the Department of Defense is unable to take measures necessary to address these challenges effectively and decisively, or even recognize the nature and scale of its problems. Thus, Congress has to step in. The statement continues, we must act now to fix national security space and put in place a foundation for defending space as a critical element of national security. So yeah, they're trying to upgrade from, you know, the space Star Wars program, you know, because they know the time is short. And yes, but, you know, that's short time. Uh, but, I mean, it's all biblical. But going on to the scriptures, uh, I'll read from 2nd Ezra 13 and 1. And it came to pass after several days, I dreamed a dream by night, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea that moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, a man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. Yeah, that man that waxed strong was Yahweh Shai, or is Yahweh Shai? And he waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Those are the, the rest of the angels and the chariots, because, you know, the chariots are going to fill the skies. What the white man calls or, you know, the UFO, we know them as the chariots of the Most High. And in these end days, you know, during the midst of World War III, that's when the Lord's going to make his return in them chariots and it's going to fill says, thousands of heaven and when he turned his countenance look 
all the things that trembled that were seen under him. Now yeah, people are going to look up and they're going to see that big chariot and the rest of the chariots and they're going to be afraid. And when so ever the voice went out of his mouth, they burned all that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. Yeah, laser beams that are going to blast on him. And after this, I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men, out of number, from the four winds of heaven, to subdue the man that came out of the sea. That sea represents, you know, the sky. That multitude of men, you know, <laughs> the Space Corps, you know, the Air Force, all the different nations' Air Force, they're going to come together to try to fight, you know, Yahweh Shai and the rest of the angels. But I beheld, and lo, he that graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. Yeah, you know, Ezra's you know, referred to the UFO or the chariot as a great mountain because it was so big. You know, look, watch that movie uh, Independence Day to get a good uh, visual representation. But I would have seen the rain a place where out the hill was graven and could not. Yeah, because he likened that chariot it was so big, he likened the chariot onto a hill or a mountain. And he looked around to see if there was, you know, any mountains out of place. And he couldn't. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, yet durst fight. Yeah, all those men, you know, these Space Corps Marines, you know, the, the Air Force, you know, all these different Air Forces, they're not going to really want to deal with it, they're going to be afraid, but just like in Egypt, you know, the Most High is going to put the spirit on them to fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth, as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempest. And that laser brings that concentrated fire that's going to come out of those... Uh, those ships and destroy, you know, Esau's fighter jets and his air force and whatever uh, he's concocting, you know, to help them out. And then, you know, the Space Corps, you know, DARPA, all these secret, you know, these little black budget secret projects, you know, Yahushai and the angels are going to burn all that up. And they were all mixed together, a uh, blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest. Yeah, the concentrated fire, the laser beams. And fell with violence upon the multitude that was prepared to fight, and burned them up every one. So that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude nothing was to be, was to be perceived but only dust and the smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Yes, yeah, it was so bad, even, you know, Ezra was afraid, you know, in his vision. So yeah, whatever they're planning, whatever they think they're going to do to try to save, you know, their kingdom, to try to save the rulership, it's not going to work. You know? Star Wars program, Space Corps, you know, the Air Force, the secret fighter jets, they, they're not talking about lose they're not going to pre prevail uh, afterward saw I the same man come down from the mountain and call unto him another peaceful multitude yeah, you know the elect the one third that make it out of America so I mean yeah that was the point uh, just wanted to bring out this little article real quick uh about Esau's plans, you know, Star Wars program, Space Corps, all that, you know, it's all gonna fail. 
you know, so you have the chariots, you know, he's going to try to fight against these chariots, but it's not going to work, and, you know, that's all I got for now, show them all.